Okay, next up we're gonna talk about using an electric kiln to heat treat your knife and what the characteristics of this type of heat treatment is. <laughs> I need a new intro. My name is Tobias Hangler. I am an Austrian bladesmith and trained metallurgist. I'm part of the development team of Apex Ultra. I've been bladesmithing for 14 years or longer and I've been doing this full time now for about two and a half, three years. We again have the same points that we discussed in the other topics. So first up is precision. Precision means how well can you hit a target temperature with um, this heat treatment system. And if you have a solid electric kiln, that will be very good to pretty good. <laughs> it depends on the model. Some of the models are kind of prone to overheat the tip because there's too much radiation energy hitting the tip and not the whole uh, furnace is at the same temperature. Some have smarter coil designs. Basically, you can say if you have a larger electric kiln, you will have a more homogeneous temperature in the middle and if you don't load your knives too close to the coils you will get better results. In general I would describe it as medium to good. The precision in the kiln is definitely sufficient to get a proper heat treatment on a knife. One thing that is imperfect is basically the design that you only have transfer of heat by radiation and the radiation comes from the coils. The coils have to be hotter than the rest of the furnace. So the more coils you have, the more equal the temperature will be. If you have few coils and those heat up very bright in comparison to the rest of the furnace, you are likely to overheat your thin parts of the knife. That already brings us, or basically was, the second part about homogeneity. So depending on the, the, the design of the kiln, you can get very good to good results with an electric kiln, depending on the design, the volume, and basically the amount of surface area that you actually have from the electric coils, from the heating coils. I would again say it's pretty good, <laughs> very decent at the least, depends on the model. When we speak about safety and emissions, the electric kiln, if you have a, a good model that is basically uh, shut off as soon as you open the door, if you have a kill switch in the door, it's very safe to use. Of course, we're treating with hot objects, but it does not have any emissions. So there's no off gas, there's no fine dust, no nothing. So that is very good. Yes, yeah, safety and emissions, electric kiln, definitely recommended. Very good, very easy to use, safe to set up in your basement uh, or anything else. The only thing you really need to take care of is a proper surrounding that will not catch on fire. If you only want to heat treat one knife, you will have to heat up the entire electric kiln. Depending on the size, that will be a couple of kilograms that need to go up to a high temperature. So the efficiency for single knives is not good. It also takes a while to get there. You really have quite an energy input. That quickly becomes irrelevant if you do more than one knife. If you do two knives, it's basically the same energy input. And if you have 10 knives, it's also not that much more because basically the heat up is most of what you need. To hold it at temperature is not too bad afterwards. So for single knives uh, efficiency is rather bad. If you do batches of knives not a problem it's pretty good. Next up is the cost of heat treating. If you heat treat out of an electric kiln, one part of the cost is the machine cost and the other part is running uh, the machine. The second, I always said, I, or it used to be overrated. If you calculate how much energy you put in, just by the kilowatt hours, how much energy the kiln actually uses, it's, it used to be a couple of euros. Now with tripling energy prices, it actually becomes a factor and you're probably talking closer to 10 to 20 euros per run, what used to be four, five, euros ish in terms of the cost usually the higher cost is buying the machine i would say it's a medium cost it's very common you can get pretty good models it's still going to set you back one to two thousand euros probably depending on the size you need and which maker you buy it from Anytime you need to heat treat a knife you will have to heat up your kiln that typically takes maybe 40 minutes, an hour, or two or three hours, depending on the model. I would say typically on an electric kiln, if you heat treat low alloy tool steels in the 800 degrees Celsius range, you will be looking at approximately one hour of heating up time until you have uh, a smooth profile and your furnace is set in. Some have slower, some have higher heat up times. The 
When we're looking at the heat up rate of the metal itself while it is in the kiln, again, this one is not an issue in terms of really like the time for you as a maker, but it is typically a time that will affect how you find your grain structure will be. First of all, I need to say to that, most important is the precision. So if you overheat the steel, no matter what the heating rate is, the grain size will be larger. However, if you hit the same temperature, a higher heating rate will result in a finer grain structure. So the heating rate of the metal itself in an electric kiln is pretty low. It's definitely the lowest of the different methods that we looked at, simply because we only have radiation. There's no convection, there's no direct heat input. We only have pretty much radiation that is heating up the knife. So we only have the glowing hot walls that transfer heat to the knife and radiation while it is a very powerful means of heat transport, it only starts becoming efficient in the 800 degrees Celsius range. So actually a stainless steel blade might heat up faster because you heat treat it at 1100 degrees and radiation will be a lot stronger then. In the 800 degrees range, radiation is still pretty weak. The heat transfer rate of temperature, or yeah, the heat transfer rate, <laughs> um, the heat transfer rate as a function of the temperature, <laughs> actually has a very strong, ah, I don't know how to say this. The heat transfer rate actually depends very, very strongly on the temperature. If you look at the formula, it's, uh, it's an exponential growth. The higher the temperature, uh, the more the heat transfer via radiation will work. That's why it's not too great at 800 degrees, but pretty good at 1100. And anybody who has ever forge welded can attest that, that there's a huge difference between a billet that is at 1000 degrees and a billet that is at almost 1200 degrees. There's a huge difference. Like the one you can hold with your gloves and a little bit away with your tongs, no problem at all. Uh, but at 1200 degrees and upwards, it's really becoming uncomfortable to be anywhere close to billet. That's heat treating knives out of an electric kiln. Yeah, you'll have a little bit more cutting on that one. <laughs> if you are interested in learning about comparison of different heat treatment systems, check out this other video over here. See you on the next video.